There has been a lot of talk lately about the future of Linux, and in particular, there's been a lot of talk about Pipewire being the future of Linux. And Pipewire, for those of you who don't know, is the replacement for Pulse Audio and such technologies like that. It's more complicated than that, and you'll need somebody who is more technologically advanced in order to actually explain it to you. I'm not a developer, so my level of technical expertise when it comes to audio usually involves shouting at the computer, Hey, Pulse Audio, why aren't you working, you stupid son? Yeah, that's usually what I do. If the computer wasn't you know, up on a desk, I'd probably kick the damn thing every time audio decided not to work. I'd probably hurt myself. But the, the, the point is, is that Pipewire is being made to replace Pulse Audio because everyone has this idea that Pulse Audio is bad and that we should not use Pulse Audio anymore, so we need something new to replace it. That's the idea anyways. So the question I have had for a long time is that, is Pulse Audio really that bad? So I've had a lot of negative experiences with audio on Linux over the last four years. It's just something that everyone who records audio goes through, whether it's problems with OBS having problems with audio, Audacity having problems with audio, having problems with audio system-wide. The problem that I face the most is that Pulse Audio seems to switch default inputs after an update. Like every time it gets updated, the inputs are no longer remembered and it goes back to usually the input goes to this webcam that's sitting on this monitor here. And I don't realize that until after I've done a video and the audio is terrible. So I have to reshoot the video and it pisses me off. So the question of whether or not Pulse Audio is bad is complicated because for the most part, Pulse Audio actually does work. It works well. Is it perfect? No, it's not even close to perfect, but there's nothing out there that is perfect. And I think that's the main problem I have with Pipewire is that we're replacing something that is imperfect with something that isn't perfect. So all we're going to be doing by promoting and spreading the use of Pipewire is bringing in new problems for audio. We know that that's true because a lot of times when I'm on a system that's using Pipewire, things break because Pipewire is new. There's going to be flaws in it. It's not perfect. So what are we actually gaining by switching to Pipewire? I'm sure there are technical things that make Pipewire actually better than Pulse Audio right at this moment. And the future for Pipewire is bright. It's, it's technologically superior to Pulse Audio in every way in the future. We can probably all agree on that. But right at this moment, what do we gain? And my answer to that question is, I don't think we gain anything. All we do is trade some problems that we've been experiencing for years for new problems that we probably solved years ago. So the thing about building something brand new, something building something from the ground up to replace something that we've already done, is that the people who are developing Pipewire are going to be going through and experiencing and having to solve every single issue that we have already solved with Pulse Audio years back. Now, I didn't use Linux full time 10, 15 years ago. I know a lot of people who did though, and everyone who ha did use Linux back then has told me that audio was garbage. It was so bad. If you've watched any of the Lunduke's Linux Sucks from you know 10 years ago, one of the number one things on it was the audio was bad. And he did that every single year. And the thing about it is that over the last 20 years, audio has finally gotten to the point where it's good enough, like it's usable. And we finally managed to get Pulse Audio to the point where for the most part, it works. Are there still flaws? Hell yes, there's still flaws. We should fix those. But did we really need to tear it apart and build something new to the point where we're actually going to have to fight and struggle through those 10, 15 years worth of struggles? for some that new product you know because we're going to they're going to go through and come up across problems that had already been solved. I don't think at this moment Pipewire offers anything but pain for most people. And the reason why this is important is because distros are switching to Pipewire left and right. So things like Garuda use Pipewire. Arco has Pipewire installed, although for the most part from what I can tell it still uses Pulse Audio as its default. Things like Ubuntu Fedora uses Pipewire. A lot of distros are switching to Pipewire as their default now. 
And in the grand scheme of things, maybe it's on equal footing with Pulse Audio and the things that are wrong with Pulse Audio and Pipewire, there are equal number of things wrong with both of them. Let's just say that that's true. I don't think it's personally true because every time I use Pipewire, something breaks. Maybe Pipewire doesn't like me. It's 100% possible. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Also 100% possible. It happens a lot. So, you know, I don't personally think that Pipewire's there yet. Like, I know Wayland isn't ready yet. I know that for a fact, okay? I think everybody knows that for a fact, or at least the people who do video work know it for a fact, because OBS just does not work well in in Wayland. It doesn't, okay? So, we've managed to come to that conclusion, a lot of people at least. Uh, I don't know what the Ubuntu guys are doing, because they've switched to that thing by default, you know, for, and they're the biggest distro out there, and I I, don't, I just don't think it's, I just know it's not ready yet, okay? Because it, it has problems on NVIDIA hardware, it has problems with with video capture and screen screen capture. It's not there yet. I think the same is true for Pipewire. It's just not there yet. And I question, I continue to question whether or not it even needs to be done. Despite my problems with Pulse Audio, I don't know that we need to tear the whole house down to make something better. Now, don't get me wrong, I like change as much as the next guy. I think that we should always be pushing towards progress. Uh, stay, resting on your laurels is not a good way of building an operating system or an application. It's not... I mean, that's exactly what Windows does. Is they There's a reason why half of Windows looks sparkly and new, and the other half looks like it was developed in 1995. Because they continue to just build on top of what they've already done, and, you know, it, it makes a, a for a mess. It makes it, it makes it messy, right? So, we don't want that. So, there's nothing wrong with theoretically creating something new. The problem I have is that I think we're switching to it maybe a little bit too fast. And maybe this is just the personal experiences I've had coming out you know, to play and influencing my opinion. Because, like I said, every time I've tried Pipewire, things have gone wrong. I mean, there was at one point, I, if you watch the channel for any amount of time, you'll know if a, a few weeks ago, I was doing, I was going to be doing a stream with Tyler. We were going to play a game. And before that stream, we realized that my audio on my system was broken. After the, it got so bad that we thought that it was actually my computer, but instead it was act because what was going on was that both of the, the distros that I had installed on two different hard drives both used Pipewire, and they were both using the exact same version of Pipewire, and they both had the same problem in that it was confusing the input and op output so that I, it was actually reading two inputs instead of having a, a, an output from the computer. It was very weird and very stupid, and... Because it was happening on both distros, I thought it was the computer, but it was actually Pipewire. Now, like I said, maybe that experience is coloring my views. And I would say that it is coloring my views, because that, uh, I, that's the way you form opinions, is by experiencing things and then giving your opinions based on the things that you experience. So, I think that at the end of the day, we're probably going to be fine. But I think that we're over the next couple of years, we're going to realize that a lot of the problems we have with audio are because we switched to Pipewire just a little bit too soon. There is another side to it, of course, that if we didn't switch to audio so soon, that we wouldn't have so many developers working on it. So if, if this had remained just a Fedora project, it would just be the Fedora guys working on it, right? So by spreading out and having a whole bunch of developers use this thing and have a whole bunch of users using it, bugs get reported bugs get fixed, at least theoretically, and Pipeware will actually get better faster. So that is a good argument for doing it. I just worry that somewhere along the line, my favorite distro is going to switch to Pipeware full time and my audio setup will crash and burn and the the work on YouTube will just dry up and I'll just be a sad, sad, sad little man because my audio doesn't work anymore. So that's, I guess, that, that was the point is that I'm you know, not looking forward to that future. Hopefully... Pipewire gets better before that happens. Anyway, so that is it for this video. I know it was a bit of a ranty slash ramble video. That's kind of what I've been doing lately. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoy more of this kind of content, you can make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I'd say hit the dislike button, but how would you know if you'd done so if, it, if you were successful? Because uh, there's no dislike button anymore. That's I, I don't know whether or not that's sad or not. I had, didn't really cover that on the channel. I don't... I mean, there's... Everybody else covered it, so I don't think it really needed any more of my input. Anyway, so uh, 
You can leave a comment in the comment section below whether or not you think Pipewire is ready. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2, Fun 2, Patrick O, Primus, Sidde, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Snipe, Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, the BSDs, Rock, and Peter A. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.